I heard in folks that you wouldn't see it. So. Um, if you need to, there's, if you can all wave, my lovely A level students, properly wave. That includes Connor and Carl at the back, you don't want to talk to anyone. Um, and uh, they come to help you out, so if you've got any queries or questions, and then you can ask them. So, um, basically what it is, is that we do app development, it's really popular, and um, there's lots of different platforms and lo lots of different languages that you can use. And one of the ones that we use in school is AppShed. Uh, two reasons, it's in browser, so therefore you've got no platform issues. And, and it's very simple, and plus they help you out even at 12.30 at night, and things like that. <laughs> Which is quite useful when you're trying to do some other stuff. Now, I just did a PDF of my presentation, mainly because I heard yesterday that the internet was a bit clicky, but it is actually working, so I'm going to show you some stuff as well. So, I'm going to talk about how we develop apps, and then how we're going to do one in here. So, if you've got a device that's connected, if you could log on to appshed.com, and we're going to try on the fly to build an app um, in half an hour. may not work, but hey, we can have a go. So, um, one of the things, um, so while you're just all logging on and that kind of people are coming in, so do feel free to come and sit on the front. Um, I probably wouldn't sit on the table, but um, feel free. Okay, so if anyone, the network is BET2013 for the Wi Fi name. And the password is I2, as in the figure, I events, all lowercase, and plural. So if you're struggling, then you can tell. It's Bet 2013 for the Wi Fi name. And the password is I figure 2 I events. Okay, just in case. I2 I events. So, yeah. so not working. It's just gone really low again. Oh, okay. It might be just because of the next connected. So, yeah. Where's yeah. since it works, I'll tether my iPhone and you can look on my iPad. All 80 of you <laughs> should be fine. Um, so, in terms of how we normally do it, we, do, we use, I use an agile methodology. Um, more of a toolkit than the kind of evangelist approach. And what we're going to do today is design, not really, obviously, because we haven't got any time to do any design process, which is incredibly important, by the way. Um, build, sort of, might work, internet, who knows, but at least we'll have something half up there, which is fantastic. And then deploy, basically, QR code it and go to fix it on your phone. And then have a play. So, and then... Um, So, normally with a app development process, you would go through kind of a proper agile which uses the kind of input in, the stages, the iterations, and then out when you do your work. And each of these sprint planning are really important. And we kind of do modify some of the language so that the students understand. So, problem definition, why are you doing it, who, you know, what's the app's purpose. Research, generally making sure that your app doesn't exist already, how can you make it better, solutions to learn, kind of wireframing, things like that. Obviously, we're not going to do any of this today. Uh, products that you test, your prototype you build, you're going to do that. Um, testing, maybe not. Um, if you can get it to work, that's the test we're going for today. Um, so it's quite important that you don't worry about things failing, because um, generally you can usually find somebody else to fix it. So is it something that's not quite working? You'll only know that once you've gone through the kind of whole process. So for us, that's our problem. Uh, research actually doesn't. Do you like apps? Yes, good. We've done that one. Solutions design. We haven't really got time to do that. So we're going to have a look at the actual AppShed platform. So um, this is good. So when you you. This is the, I don't know if anyone's used it, but they changed the design and it's actually much more user friendly now and it's really quite easy and I even sat down with my little seven year old to see what he like. He couldn't quite do it, obviously, because of the literacy, but he could certainly do it with an adult, which is quite useful. So, normally you would register, but obviously if I'm already registered. So you just log in, this is 
where we go the internet. So very simple. When you register as well, if you do that now, it takes you to the same process and then you can straight in and use it after we've done it. So in terms of hands up who's already had a go at using app shared. That includes my students. How many of you done any app development at all on any platform? Yeah. Any cool X coders? People who can yeah, you can use your X and Grace. So um um so that's good. That one guy. Right. So when you log in, what will show you is kind of your area and how to build the it brings you into the editor. So and as you can tell the internet is pretty slow. <laughs> so what I've done on this sort of section, you can already see I've started adding some Twitter feeds into it, and you get this kind of um, simulator all of, um, when you're doing it. So now that's loaded, you can see here I've got lots of different apps. These are generally sort of half finished ones because I've been teaching something. As you can see, new app, new app, test, beta test app, year 10, hello. Obviously, very poorly and badly named apps, so don't do that. But yeah. So what we're going to look at today is we're going to look at um, using JavaScript in your app. Uh, I don't expect you to kind of go through all of this with me, um, but if you can kind of keep up, that'd be pretty cool. So as you can see, I've got a splash screen, and you, depending on your device, you will have to scroll. I mean, obviously, I'm normally used to using like a widescreen desktop, so you don't have to do this. But if you, you can actually build it on your phone if you. It's a little bit fiddly, but I have actually built. Uh, I did the MOSFest one on my phone while I was doing the workshop, so it is possible to do it on your phone. So I'm going to go a little bit. Is anyone actually going to try and build one with me? So, boys, are you listening? And George, can I help? So, there's some students that are came to have a look, and I had a spare laptop, so they're going to try and build one while we're doing it. So, feel free to shout any tips, that'd be great. So, this particular one has just three tabs. So it has a tab that does a little maths one that creates a JavaScript alert message like it would do on your phone. And then another version of it, which actually has the actual, in a sense, a display message in here as opposed to an alert. Just to show you the two options. And I've got all of the JavaScript so you don't need to, on, on my PDF, so you can actually just copy it. And I'll give that to everybody later as well. So let's say if we wanted to change our device. So say we're not an Apple fan. I am, but that's fine. So then we want to go to our Galaxy. You can just see straight away how it would look. So you can see straight away. And it's really good for doing that to test, you know, because everyone's got their own particular device. And you can also go to any one of the projects. So we go to iPad. I mean, obviously, be designed to go on the iPhone. You see, I need to do testing. But that's pretty cool. So it's quite good for you know when you want to show different things, and they, it, it gives the when you're doing it as a uh, like a student developer, um, you've got your own little ownership file like Android and like iPhone. Like, like, <laughs> so let's start. So boys, are you gonna? Are you George? Are you just going ahead with them and building it? Cool. Right. So we want to do another little tab. So basically, you can have a maximum of five tabs on here, and I'm just going to basically have a look and do a map. So, what do you think you should call it? What would be a good name? Map. Explore. <laughs> That's better, isn't it? The map. Map's really boring. So, just make sure that we get rid of this. You have to bear with me. This is a a Windows machine and I'm a, a Mac person, so can I fix that? <laughs> <coughs> and then, so basically, I've changed, I've named it, and now because obviously in my, in, in my area, I have some uh, images uploaded already, and there is some already that are populated within the actual app environment, and you can see there's all the uh, icons there. So. So you can scroll down and you can pick one that you think would be appropriate. Let's put a motorbike like that's how we can explore with that. This is, uh, yeah. So 
with, you can see with the scroll and you use another device with a small window. So you can see here straight away I've got my icon. I've called it Explore. And then you can, you can do Save. And then it will save it. And then you can change it into the action. I'm going to do action straight away. And then you can see you change to action. It's the same example you did it wrong. And you just, actually you don't want that. You want something else. This is where you change it. So, that's kind of, so we want to edit, so I click, so you click, there's no right click or left click, you just click, and then you go down to edit, so this is like, so you're going, I actually don't want to do that, I just not really want to, I want to do something else, so you can change all of your images, and you can drop points on your map. So let's go to the Twitter one. So if I navigate to my Twitter one, I'm going to show you what I've done. So basically, it might take a bit of a while to load into the internet. It was working. It tends to sort of show the screen when the internet drops down. So, so basically, the Twitter icon is already available in the actual icons for you. So you can see straight away that you can do like a standard, so go to standard tab, and you can change, I'm just going to go and just to add so you can see where the image is, so tag icons are here. Now to do a hashtag, you need to go into Twitter and actually create the Twitter hashtag um, a widget for that. Or you can use Google Docs and create an RS feed. A little bit more complicated for that and then we've got in 45 minutes. Um, but it's very really useful. There's lots of different ways to do it. Um, so if you wanted to have just a hashtag of the same event shown, then that's easily possible. But I'm just going to show you using a particular person's name. So. Make sure that you, and if you're teaching, it's a really good test to show that the students have got. It tends to be one of the mistakes that they would make is that they'd either put the app sign or they wouldn't. So, so we do at, and then, anyone got a Twitter handle? Should we do at check? So there we go, we've got our Twitter, and we just do save. And you can see straight away it's shared it. Now, fortunately, because the internet's not fully working, <laughs> it's actually not loading the tweets, but it does actually work. It should be, this is how you can tell that it, you've got an issue with your fiction. And as you can see here, you can't quite see, there's like a little squiddle, squiddle and I don't want to it. So, let's get on to the portrait. So, we've had a look at doing the Twitter. And you can see here, like you can see, you can call it the tag, you can call it Twitter, you can name it whatever you think is most appropriate. And what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be looking at the JavaScript section. So let me just exit now. And if I go to the home, and if I now go back, now you can see we've got some input boxes. So if we go down to the form section, you can see. There is these little bits here. So you can create a button, you can do a text area, and you can do an input box. So for these, you can see we've got an input box here and here, and then we've got a button here, and then these here are a text field that actually has this. So in some senses, they would look like this if we hadn't applied a style to it to fill it in and make it look like it's just an actual plus sign. Okay. So click. And then we go to edit. And you can see here that it's actually called check my answer. 
and then okay. and we're going to go into action. Right. Okay. You can see here that we've got some very simple JavaScript, which is where I'm going to get you my presentation. Right. So what we've got. So with an alert message, that's just like your pop-ups on your actual phone. And you can say, otherwise, you've got it wrong. So we'll test it in a minute. And then the other thing you can see at the bottom, there's two different things. Now, there's a full API that you can look at. For you. So what I've done, if you look at the differences, here you've got app and then get variable. So obviously what that's doing is grabbing the variable um, out of the first input box. So in kind of like kids speak, it's like having like a little backpack with the number that you put in. And then you've got another one in your second input box, and then we've added it together to do a up. And then what it's doing is, if they match the answer, then the alert message that the pop up on your phone will actually display, well done, correct? Else, if you've got it wrong, it'll actually display this. Now what the difference between the two is, is that I've actually set the variable for the second box. So, if you have a look here, on this little section here, what the difference is, is I've created another variable here called display text. So I've had to set that display text area to then display that message as opposed to using an, an alert. Okay, that's just literally the differences between the two. Okay, so, so here we go, we're going to do save, I'm going to return to it. So in theory, we should be able to do, so if we do, okay, thank you. Okay, so in theory, what should the answer be? on a Thursday morning. Hey, Jordan? No, you really so upset my class. So, so I'm going to navigate to them. And why not? So you can see straight away, there's lots of different reasons why you could actually use JavaScript from a teaching perspective or a learning tool. Now, the reason why I kind of um, wanted to show the differences, one of them is like a really quick self-learning, kind of like, oh, I've got that right, I've got that right, that's cool, that's fine. So with this message though, what you can then say to them is, you can actually give more detail into why their answer was wrong. So it's quite good so that when they're looking at it, it's actually just part of the answer. So you can see the actual, I know we're doing really simple sums, it could be anything, yeah? Um, I haven't quite tried it with simplifying Boolean algebra yet, but uh, I'll have a go. So, um, and it's really good in terms of making sure that you have because when you get question wrong, there's nothing worse than going, okay, you've got it wrong, I still don't know why I got it wrong. It's a bit like I remember when I was really little and I couldn't spell a particular word, and the teacher went, go and look up in the dictionary, and went, yeah, but I can't spell it. She went, yeah, go and look up in the dictionary. And it was like, oh my god, it's deadly embrace. <laughs> so, you know, if you can't spell it, you can't spell it. So, one of the things that, um, that you can actually use this for, which is kind of where we're kind of 
go, go, go next, is you can have like, when you're doing learning things, you can then, based on the answers that they get, you can suggest videos to go and look at, maybe. So say you want to link to a video, and they haven't quite got to Morgan's Law yet, then you would point them to that one. Or if they're just acing through, you can send them off to go and look at Michelle Williams in New South Wales doing quantum computing. It's like, in terms of what you can do with the JavaScript, you can actually do this like kind of self-managed learning. So in some sense, you could get the students to build the app and then use it to improve their own actual knowledge. So, let, so in some senses, it's useful for um, education, but it's also getting them to be part of the design process, which is really, really important. So, um, it's, the really good thing about this, and I suppose to some of the others, there's no install issues, there's no browser um, blockers or anything like that. I haven't found that it's been blocked anywhere yet, um, which is really, really useful in terms of when you go to use it at different schools, you want to do training sessions and things like that. It's quite a simple way to use um, app building. Okay. So, now, what I've done as well is I've actually put the JavaScript at the top, um, and I, 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 I'll, I'll be able to email it out to you later, but just so that you've got it, so if you wanted to give it to somebody else. Now, the next thing, which I think is really cool, and I don't know if this is live yet, um, but this is really designed to take, whereas my students would code it directly, being able to code JavaScript if you're like 10 might not be available to you for, not that you can't do it, but you might have a literacy issue. You might have a comprehension issue or whatever. So what they've come up with, which is, isn't live yet, just so you know, is actually this kind of backpack visual graphics based kind of coding. And what that does is it allows, so say you're a primary school teacher and you want to do app building with them, this will allow you to do very simple actions that I could do quite complicated with the JavaScript above. You see there, this is doing exactly the same thing as number one, if number one equal is, um, you know, your answer is equal to the answer box, or if one plus one equals the next backpack, so they'd be able to understand that because it's something physical. I mean, you can literally do it with backpacks on their back and do a little run around game. With, I might actually get my hand just to I'm filming. No, it's all right, don't worry. <laughs> As they cower in the corner. So, um, so it's, it's allow um, any age group to develop. Um, and also, if you're doing this as well, it'd be really good in terms of you explaining what a variable is. Because I think, and, and you can also look if further on, depending on how complicated you want to get, you can look at algorithms and stuff in a very graphical format. And getting this kind of computational computer science theory, as we all know, feedback, and then touch. Um, I think a lot of people will be quite scared, but they can do a picture of the backpack as opposed to if bracket number dot get app set app. Do you know what I mean? It seems, even though it's once you go through and break it down, it actually makes total sense, it looks quite unfamiliar initially. So you can build your JavaScript by using these little backpacks, which is pretty really cool. So um, that was my little, I really, really enjoyed that. So, sorry, go ahead. When you build, Oh, this is only new, it's not out yeah, yet. Yeah. But when you build that way, will you be able to see the JavaScript and do it with anything? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know whether, I mean, I'm sure you could set the settings so a bit like, you know, the teacher mode has the backpack, you know, with, its, with it, and you can show the JavaScript after. Um, but yes, it will be there and you will be able to see it as well. But obviously, that, can you imagine a seven year old would have that? It would be like, my son would cry. <laughs>
then your apps are all sort of private and um, you can monitor them and you can see when they've logged on and what they've done and everything like that. Um, but if you just register, like now as a private user, anyone can go on and that's like you can app, register as an individual. So, <coughs> so I was just going to show you. Very good. Um, yeah, so there's a, there is the opportunity to, and it's here, it's called the App Show that occurred me. And we're obviously, I won't be able to register in my school. Again, if you wait about 20 minutes, it'll live it. Um, so, basically, you can, what's, what it's done is it was mainly designed because teachers kind of wanted some way to monitor what the, the learning progress was. You know, it's a bit like um, uh, making sure your kids have kind of completed all their homework. You can check whether they've done stuff. And you can also probably see the bits that they don't really understand, actually. You can quite tell quite easily. sheets that you want to do, sort of, um, kind of a pack, really. They come in different um, styles, obviously, depending on whether you want. You can modify them as well, but they are they are available for you to use. And then is this, the important bit, is the progression aspect in terms of monitoring what the students do. Like you can do if you look at, um, I'm just trying to think of a good example that does good progression. Code Avengers. If your students log on to Code Avengers as a teacher, you can see what they've done. I get my students to do that because the JavaScript is really good. It's a really good way to learn the JavaScript. There's lots of other ones as well, like Code Academy. But I'm certain, certainly in terms of teachers, it's very good to be able to monitor their progress. And certainly when they're doing things like more complicated stuff like the JavaScript, and they might not get in, it's usually something like they've missed off a curly bracket. Or if it's PHP, it's usually they've missed off the equal sign. So therefore, <laughs> that's some of them. So, and then obviously this has been completely mapped to the curriculum. I think some of it now will be slightly modified with the uh, link to the uh, new EVAC. And I think even in primary we're going to have the word algorithm in the new program of study, as far as I can, as I'm aware. So maybe that's going to be a bit of a shock to people. So this will be remapped appropriately to all of that computer science, all the way from Key Stage 1 to Key Stage 5. So you can then straight away go, actually you tick that, you know whatever whatever level if they're going to have that as well. So in terms of support as well, there's like online, um, so if you're in there, there's like in online help while you're in, in the app development environment. Um, sometimes it's live, sometimes it's nice depending on um, what time you're actually online yourself. And that's really good. They just email you back and it's really, really, um, even if your question doesn't quite make sense, usually the answer helps you, <laughs> helps you fix your own problem. And then they kind of reword it on, on how you should have asked the question, as I found out on a couple of occasions, which was quite useful because then I could then go, oh, look what we can do in class. And your students think you're amazing. Or, or maybe not, as soon as they're here, hiding with themselves, going, oh, no. Right, the other really, really important thing um, is actually the last bit, obviously, for the child protection issue, the closed environment, and all of those things that you kind of just think, want to kind of make sure that you're protected against in terms of an education environment. Okay. So everything that's um, in the Atchard Academy is private. It's only kind of linked to your school. So therefore you as a teacher or whoever is the responsible person actually can, can monitor all of that. None of their apps are published to the uh, live gallery, which is like when the guys have finished this, it will publish to the live gallery, um, unless you want it to. Okay. And that can be like a competition, it could be, um, and after you've gone through parental authorization for them to then, and what happens is once it's on the gallery, anyone else can use them. So there's lots and lots of, uh, are you all right? Good. Um, there's lots of apps that are on the gallery, so you can use other people's work and modify it. I think that's just such a good idea to actually share, because there's not enough sharing, actually, in education of things. Um, so, in terms, obviously it's a subscription based because of all of the support that's required, and it's based on number of users. 
So even if you have a massive school and you've only got a small class, then you, you, know, you can work out which um, quite reasonable. So, so as you can see here, there's the account that I'm using at the moment. So I've got a limited amount of data. Everything I do is on the public gallery. And my apps have ads in them, but that's how life works. So. And, then, and then obviously a professional account would be more like a business. Um, and also apps should, even though we're, this is our own development, like we can build our own, they actually, they can actually build native apps for you. So uh, there is another service if you want just an app built if you're a professional, professional company, as opposed to just us education is going, oh yeah, we'll have a bit of that, a bit of that. Bit of that. Oh, that looks good. Yeah, after you go, oh my god, that's so good, so badly designed. <laughs> Let's redo it. And then, as you can see here, there is the education. So, let's have a quick look. So, and obviously, none of us can afford the. Uh, so, on what it is, it's based on users. And again, we'll have to wait over 10 years for the internet to load it. So, while that's loading, uh, have you got any more questions? Answer everything. Does does it integrate through any of the single sign-on services? I mean, I've just been to the RM stall and they're promoting this this product they're going to uh, release in March, and, and there's sort of it, it will. Oh, do you mean like Persona? Yeah. Plug in. Yeah. Um, I don't think so. I don't think that would. And certainly from um, I, I wouldn't know from a professional account thing, but certainly from they probably you can't really get single sign-in in school so, environment yeah. anyway. So. But outside of that, I would maybe be less speaking. Well, it's in schools, though. Oh, okay. But yeah. I think it's. I, think, I don't think schools allow. I'm not sure. Do. Uh, but you wouldn't within this because it's in. A, it's in a closed. To make sure for all reasons. Yeah. Any other questions? Four hundred and fifty pounds for wallet. Yeah, and that's for about a hundred users. Um, or is it the scan bank and then the sign for school? Yeah. There is a discount at the moment. I think it was smaller, but that was 400 plus. Yeah, what, what were you thinking of? Like just, just a small group. A, a group of 20. Mm. Well, how old are they? The six. The six members. Do we got, they then, if there's six members, obviously, because they, they depend on. If you, if you, you just have to note that any, uh, any app that they publish. They don't have to publish it because it can just stay in the development environment, and and I'll show you that in a, in a minute. Um, and you can put it on your phone via QR code, but it's not the same as publishing it to the public gallery. So, like everything, let's go back to my pack. So here, so here's me. You can change your profile. Um, Shut some of this down because it seems to be too. So if I just go through it again just to show you can see. And obviously I would don't have a student at hand. I'd love to be that young. So I'm going to show you how we actually kind of publish and have you done that yet? Um George? So you can test it on your phone. Which is really, really good. So you can test it in browser, you can actually preview it, and it gives you a simulation of it, which is really good. And then, or you can actually preview it and put it on your actual device, which is quite clever. So, right, so here's my app. This hasn't been published yet. I'm going to open my app again, just so you can go through and see it. And then you can see here at the top, I'm just going to scroll down it just so you can see. So you've got settings, publish, share, and then if you want to shut it down. So let's have a quick look at what the settings do. Now the settings are for your main app, so for example the name of your app. Kind of some description so people know what it's about. That's really quite helpful. A little icon, so what it looks like on your phone. And splash screen is kind of the load screen for a couple of seconds. So I've just stuck it in the logo. Um, so we use styles again, if you're really cool at doing some HTML and CSS, you can actually add your CSS in there as well. You should see it on the and then here is like if you want to do a quick link, I don't know if you can just see it, you can create the name of your app 
there. So obviously man's called tour code examples. So I'm just going to save that. And that's really good because sometimes you know when you're looking at your app and you think actually the colors just don't really work or you've got all the, when you're testing it's really good. So let's have a look at sharing. So you can see here there's lots of different options. If I wanted to, I could tweet my app. So let's just do that. So that's in a minute. I'll do it at the end. Booting me out again. Um, so, if you have a QR code reader, you could scan and have my app on your phone now. If you want to have a go, feel free. Feel free. You can get on. It's not class. It's like the best class. Is it Android only? No, it's, it's cross-platform. The only thing I'm not that brilliant at is actually trying to get the icon image on an Android car you do that. That's kind of, that's not my expertise, should I say. So I have a little help sheet, which actually I'll probably um, add up again, but not with me. So has anyone got it, managed to get it on? Just feel free to walk up if you can't actually get it over. So it's uh, 147. Did you got my phone? <laughs> <laughs> Anyone want to work? Yeah, that might be better. Let me just freeze it and I'll put it. Someone's got that. <laughs> And the same thing, you can kind of, um, and it gives you the QR code again. But it goes through how your app would actually work. It's not an emulator, it's just a simulator. So and as you can see, it doesn't look much different from when we were in the development environment, but it's just literally 
how your phone would work once it was on. Oh, sorry, how your app would work once it was on your phone. So if we do new tweets and work, and there's mine. You can see it's not really loading as an internet. So if we do like a little test in theory. You can add the home screen in Safari, yeah. okay. and it makes the icon. And so how do I do that, Jordan? If you're on an iPhone and you're in Safari, at yeah. the bottom, if you click on the plus sign, or the share icon, it should come up and then it should say add to home screen somewhere there. So if you've got a Galaxy S3, what would you do? I'm not oh, sure it would work on Android. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got an Android device? Cool. Okay, so how do we add a uh, iPhone to the home screen? There should be um, uh, a shortcut. Um, this is where we need now. <laughs> <laughs> Then your home screen adds the icon. See, I don't use. That's what you get when you just go and find a back 